Hello everyone. Wanted to uh, present you with a new uh, Cinema 4D tutorial. It's going to be pretty straightforward and it's going to have to do with uh, creating a simple set of steps or stairs. It's a real down and dirty way that uh, you'll be able to uh, quickly put together a set of steps or stairs for your next project. So let's launch Cinema 4D and I've got one that I've created here already. It's pretty straightforward and you'll see that uh, I've just applied a simple concrete texture to it and one light so there's nothing spectacular happening here so let's go ahead we'll go ahead and leave the light we'll delete everything else and get started alright this is pretty straightforward we're going to create by using a spline go up to your script uh, up top and we're going to choose linear spline alright and then we're going to jump into our top view top view here and at this point we're going to draw the shape, the profile, downward aspect of uh, how steps would, would appear if you were looking at them from the side. We want to turn on snapping so that we can, as we draw our, our spline line here, it will snap to these uh, this rectangular grid pattern. So to do that, on your keyboard press P and then choose Enable Snapping. So press P on your keyboard and click Enable Snapping. Okay, so now we're going to take our spline tool, make sure we've got our linear spline tool selected, and we're going to begin to click at each one of these corner points, and just keep clicking, marching our way down, and you'll see this is pretty straightforward, and you can do this for as many steps as you'd like, I'm going to do probably 8 or 10 anyway, for this example, and you'll notice because we've enabled snapping, that uh, the spline is snapping to this, this grid that we've got. All right, that ought to be good. And so we're going to move back. And up top, I'm going to leave a little area that might resemble a, a stair landing where you've walked to the top and you now you have a place to stand. So I'm going to come back over. Here's our intersection where we finish that step. I'm going to come back a few more. And I'm going to come up to the top. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to click on here to close that spline. So you can see we've created the shape of our step where that you would move your way from bottom to top and have a place up top as a landing. So next, what do we do? All right, we need to go into our shapes under our spline area again and select a rectangle. Now take your uh, scale tool and we're going to scale this up so that it's larger than the shape that we've drawn with our spline. Now we're going to move that rectangle so that it encapsulates that spline area that we've just drawn in with our spline tool. All right, now we're going to step back out. We're going to go back into perspective move, uh, view. And you see we've got our rectangle on our spline set here. Now what we need to do is extrude that, and that's pretty straightforward. What we'll do is we'll go in and get our extrude nerves, okay? And what we want, what is it that we want to extrude? We want to extrude the spline. Okay, so we're going to drag our spline. In previous tutorials, in regards to using bools, you always place in the bool at the top of the hierarchy the element that you want to keep. Well, in regards to extrude nerves or extrude nerves, you want to we want to extrude the spline, so it's going to go in first, and then we're going to take our rectangle. We want to drag that beneath the spline. Now, select your extrude nerves once you've done that. You see we've got a spline and then the rectangle. Select your extrude nerves and come down to objects here. Now we're going to zero everything out. That 20 is put in there for some reason by default, and I couldn't tell you why. It just always seems to be the case. Now, we're going to take this movement and we're going to drag the center movement up, and you'll see that we'll begin to extrude that spline out that we've created. All right. Now we're left with that rectangle. We don't want that, so there's a way to get rid of that. Select it, go to your basic tab under your object manager here, and then under visible editor choose off, and then visible and renderer choose off. And that for all purposes uh, removes that from, from your scene. Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do. You'll notice that if we select this extrude nerve and we wanted to rotate it uh, 90 degrees, watch what happens. 
Right? And we're still moving incrementally because we have snapping on. When we Remember when we pressed P on our keyboard, we have snapping enabled. So we're going to rotate that down. And what I like to do is I like to, if you'll see how I'm rotating, down here it's giving me uh, the position and degrees of the rotation. But over here under um, object, you get a, a better, better representation of that. I'm sorry, coordinates. And at this point, you can just type in 90 and hit enter, and it'll it'll rotate it quickly for you. So we need to scale that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scale tool, and I'm going to scale it in all directions. And we can see that it's distorting that, and we don't want that, but we want to get it down to a general size that's going to be usable in the scene. And so now we're get, getting that a little bit more in line with what we'd like to have. So here we are. If I want to scale that out maybe just a little bit more. There we go. Move that over into our scene. Move it up just a touch. All right. And at this point, I've got a, con a concrete texture that's added. It's part of the, uh, if you go under Create, Load Material Presets, under Visualize Materials, and Concrete. It's a concrete, I believe, number concrete number three. And uh, at that point, you can just drag that material on there. We can take our light and move that light around to light the surfaces a little bit better. And you can see the steps are a little steep. So what we can do is select those steps, select that extrude nerve. And at this point, we can scale them back out a little bit. And then we'll shrink that width just a touch. And so now we've got a much more, got a much more visible, uh, usable set of steps in regards to how a person might walk on those. And you'll notice on this texture that uh, the texture is not applying properly. What I like to do yeah, on objects that have hard corners, they're square, uh, large, flat, linear surfaces. You can change that projection type to cubic, and you'll see that it uh, gives it a much better look. Although right now that texture that's applied is too small, what we can do is increase its U-length and its V-length up to about 500. And you'll see that that smooths that out. And something else you might want to do is check off the seamless attribute. That will give you some funny abnormalities that you'll see in the texture. If you do remove that, another way to eliminate that is by changing that U offset so that you can bring those. If me zoom in on that, you'll be able to see a little bit better. See how I've got these uh, repetitions happening here. If I move that U offset so that that repetition's on the edge, it uh, makes things a lot more more usable. And uh, so. Well, you can see we've got our landing up here on all of our different steps. And this is just a real quick way for you to uh, get an idea of uh, how easy it is to use um, splines and extrude nerves to uh, take any shapes that uh, may be difficult to model or assemble by using primitives. Uh, you can just outline them, or more or less draw yourself a shape with a spline, and then extrude it out into a, a usable object that you can render in, in your scene. So, Hope that was helpful to you guys. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.